Some of you, when you hear the fact that you're gonna have to crank out a minimum two to three tracks per week to turn sync licensing into a significant chunk of your income, get a little freaked out. I've heard so many comments and so many emails from producers that are wanting to do well with sync licensing, but then when they hear that it's not a matter of just putting out an album or two a year and kind of waiting to see those royalties pile in, but it's literally a, it's a job. I mean, it's a hustle. It's, you know, it's war. You got to show up. It's a battle every single day um, and keep cranking out music because if you're going to call yourself a music producer, what else should you be doing with your time? You should be producing music. Ta-da. And I know a lot of people get really scared. They get really freaked out when they hear that. And it's really frightening to think about the amount of work it can take to really crank up your catalog the number of tracks you have out there circulating, getting placements, and, and cranking that number up to the point where it actually is doing you either part-time or full-time income. So I wanted to share one encouraging thought with you guys that are maybe struggling with that fear and you're not sure if you're gonna be able to keep up with that kind of a workload because right now it looks to you like the top of Mount Everest and you're standing at the floor and you're like, no way, like how the hell am I gonna climb up that thing? That's, that's just impossible. I can never get up that high. I am out of shape. I have not been working <laughs> like that. Um, I don't have oxygen. There, you know, you have all these reasons why looking up at that sort of workload ahead of you seems so intimidating. Well, yeah, because you might have not ever had a schedule this grueling in your life before. So it's not easy in the beginning. I wanna make sure that's very, very clear. To go from wherever you are, let's say you're doing two tracks a month, okay? Like you're a little bit on the slower side, you take a long time with your tracks, you, you spend maybe you're kind of struggling with perfectionism or something like that, and you just are not able to hit bounce in a timely manner, and it's just constantly going back, constantly revising, all that kind of stuff. All right, so you're at two tracks per month. Well, the first thing you should try to do is double that number. So just go to four tracks per month, and that might mean hitting bounce on something that you don't think is perfect but you know that you need to get those four tracks done. In fact, it's more important to get the four tracks completed, bounced, done, than um, getting like the two tracks completed that sound great, um, but like missing your deadline and your goal of having to double the tracks down. You should really make sure that even if the four tracks are not licensable and they're not gonna go anywhere and you're never gonna pitch them to a library, still more important, I believe, to hit bounce on all four of them and set yourself a new standard that four tracks a month is possible for you that's the whole key right there right i can tell you right now two to three two to three tracks a week is possible because it's been my minimum for so many so many years in fact many weeks it's way more than that but if you've never had that possibility me saying that it doesn't matter to you right because it's not in your in your life in your bones in your body you've never felt four tracks or two to three tracks a week or even maybe four tracks a month You've just never felt that, so it just doesn't feel real to you. What you need to do is start feeling that. And in order to feel that, you gotta do it, okay? So in the beginning, yes, this is going to be tough. This is gonna be like going to the gym for the first time, lifting up some pretty heavy weights that you haven't lifted before. You're gonna feel sore, you're gonna feel a little bit burned out, you're gonna feel a little bit stretched out. But just like when you go to the gym, after a first couple of times getting into your new routine, what happens? suddenly gets a little easier, right? Things get a little bit more automatic, right? And your muscle has built up a little bit, your body and your brain and your mind are all ready for this workout and it starts to become a little bit more routine. It's not so different and, and new and strange. Same thing happens with this. So your four tracks become your new minimum, right? And once that feels standard for a couple of months, double it. Or maybe go to six. If you can't go to double, go to at least to six and constantly push yourself just one step at a time up that mountain. Pretty soon six or eight tracks a month feel normal. Well, there you are. You're already at two tracks per week, okay? Pretty close to the level that I think is a minimum to do really well in this business to get up your numbers uh, two to three tracks per week, right? So I want you guys to be um, reassured that in the beginning, yes, it hurts, it sucks, it's intimidating, but you don't need to go from like two tracks a month to doing two to three per week. That That is ridiculous, yeah. Don't do something like that. That's literally like somebody who's never took a step in their life, jumping up and trying to hike up to um, you know the top of Everest on day one. You're gonna die, you're just gonna be dead. It's just, and you're gonna burn out and you're gonna fall off the, the mountain. It's not gonna be a pretty sight, okay? No, you need to train first, right? You need to slowly train, Go crawl, walk, run, do some elliptical, do some weight training, all that kind of stuff. You need to sort of acclimate yourself to working at a, a quicker pace, okay? With what we do in Sync Academy, the reason why a lot of those tutorials were created is because there's so much time wasted in the studio with so many producers because I was in so many studios in LA where hours would go by, hours, and nothing was being done to the track. They were literally 
fiddling with a one EQ knob, you know, on a plugin, um, or just listening to their own track, getting high on their own supply for hours. And it was so enraging for me because I was so used to like, hit bounce, man, let's get this done. Let's move on to the next one. We got to keep moving forward. But there's a lot of producers that do not have that ability because they've just never, never been trained in it. They just don't know how to move forward and just get onto that next track. So the tutorials that we put together in Sync Academy are pr primarily designed to help you do that. And also, you don't have a lot of free time. I know that. You only have a couple of hours a day, maybe only a couple of hours a week with all your obligations, your job, family, kids, all the things you got going on in your life. So a lot of the, the, the tips, the strategies, and the insights that we provide to you in these videos are obviously meant to help you go quicker to two to three tracks per week, right? So setting up templates beforehand, getting your mix templates, getting your mastering templates beforehand, understanding the philosophy, the strategy for mixing or mastering, like what are we doing there? Because a lot of producers just start throwing plugins onto their track because like, well, I got to master it, right? And I put plugins on there with presets. I think that's mastered, right? Or they don't really know, is it sounding better? Is it sounding worse? Um, am I squashing, over compressing my track or is it embellishing what's really there? So there's a lot of confusion and I suffered with a lot of this stuff. Analysis paralysis to the hundredth degree. Uh, remixing my track, you know, uh, final mix one, final mix 1.1, final mix real final, final mix real final 1.3. If you've been there, you know what that feels like, right? Where you just, you, it's never done. It's just never quite there. So we wanna make sure that you are much more focused and clear-minded when you start your process of producing, mixing, and mastering. And then when it's done and it's ready to be balanced and you know that it's ready to go, you feel confident by hitting that control B, Apple B, whatever it is, bounce, you know? Hitting bounce on your track, really, really, really important. So anyways, I hope that's encouraging for you guys. Hang in there. It's a slow journey, it's a long journey but it does get easier. As the years go on, as the months go on, um, you get to the point where it starts to feel like, you know, if you, as if you have been going to the gym for a long time. You know, imagine when you first learned how to ride a bike. Awkward, falling over, skidding your knees up, right? And now when you get on the bike, you don't think about it. You know, I'm obviously a new father, I'm seeing my baby for the first time lift up her neck, trying to get her neck to move up. It's a struggle for her. It's just like, oh, I can just see how much it just hurts her and it's so much pain and, you know, so much struggle to get her to do that. How many of you still struggle to lift your head up anymore? <laughs> you know, so these are some of the things, this is how life is, right? It just starts off in a really, really tough space, but then that curve really mellows out and things get a lot easier. So I want to let you know that there is a promised, um, a great, awesome, easier path for you in the future once you get through the, uh, the challenging first part. So leave me your comment below. What do you guys think? Did you guys enjoy this? Are you finding this stuff uh, interesting? And are you... Um, um, anyways, are you having a good first, uh, you know, 2021? Are you having a good uh, start to your year? I want to know how everything is going in your life. So leave a comment below.